your neighborhood in Fairfax just a few years ago. So our next, uh, our next panel member is representing Reston for a Lifetime, and this was an initiative that again came out of the Fairfax County uh, program, and with the, the generous help of Supervisor Kathy Hudgens, this, this initiative in Reston was started with a forum just like this one. And uh, now it's nearly two years old, and um, Pat Williams is here today. She has been a volunteer that has uh, been there since, the, since day one in sort of planning the efforts. And again, Pat is a senior service veteran as a uh, uh, entrepreneur and owner of a home care agency. But in Reston, there's not an organization or a board that Pat hasn't served on. So, uh, <laughs> Pat? Thank you, Steve. When we started looking at what we were going to do in Reston, we, we could have used Ron and Ed to set an example because we started with naming our community um, Aging in Reston. We thought AIR was a nice uh, acronym. But some people, without the wonderful examples of Ed and Ron, said they didn't like the word aging. They didn't see how it could be so glorious and so successful. And so we changed the name to Reston for a Lifetime. And sometimes you'll see it written as R number 4L. That's our abbreviation. Um, but also, Reston for a Lifetime uh, allows for um, the picture of intergenerational activities, and we thought multi-generational was an important, going to be a very important aspect of our community. Uh, Reston for a Lifetime is currently an initiative and a powerful movement. Uh, it was created, as Steve said, from the ground up as we worked together under the impetus and the oversight of uh, Hunter Mill District Supervisor Kathy Hudgens and Martin Taylor, her assistant. Uh, rest in residence uh, for two years now. We've been articulating our, our needs and our dreams, and and uh, we've been working in defined phases, three to six to eight month phases, and uh, encouraging our energetic and our brilliant residents to become the leaders uh, of our village. Some people think a village is a structure. Have you noticed that? And it's really not. It's it's a concept. It's it's a virtual village, so to speak. Uh, in this phase, uh, uh, two years later, we have no defined membership. We have no dues. We have no staff. We have no board of directors. Um, we are a, a village in, in creation, and I want to show you some of the things that have come up in, in Reston. Um, our original uh, four conveners continue to coordinate efforts to keep our momentum going and growing. Uh, as you may recall, if you attended a, a previous uh, meeting for, for McLean, uh, we began with uh, four conveners in Reston. Steve Gurney convened the models uh, group. Uh, we had a transportation committee that was convened by Bonnie White. Brenti Robertus headed a housing group and I led the resources group. These four groups did a lot of work. We had 100 hours of meetings, and we've now morphed into four new groups that are taking the initiative forward in Reston. The first one is education and advocacy. Advocacy is very important. We're, we need to advocate for accessibility and for affordability. Um, education will focus on the ways that our residents can remain in the community for a lifetime. One educational uh, event that we just held, uh, Brent DiRobertis um, coordinated um, a housing uh, seminar for our residents and was very well received. It was a non-commercial event, but it helped people look at the cost of housing, various types of housing. Uh, how to retrofit their housing, how to uh, make a move that would, or how to refinance, or how to be able to afford in the com afford to live in the community now when we have some financial uh, challenges in our in our country. Uh, this week, uh, 
we had a Reston for a Lifetime meeting that uh, emerged with an interest in how can we find some senior discounts through for our cable services or for our telephone services. Um, we also will look at uh, having a, an educational forum on transportation and the public transportation that's available and how to use it. We have uh, a second group going forward now that's going to look at projects. Uh, Barbara talked about ways that people could work on their balance. We brought the Independent Living Project of Fairfax County to the Reston Community Center. And this is a project that is helping seniors in many facets of their lives, but particularly uh, always has an, a component of using uh, yoga and exercise to improve our balance so that we don't have that catastrophic fall. Um, many ideas have come forward for projects, and, the, and we encourage them to be spearheaded by the residents. If a resident says, we need this and we don't have that, and we say, well, let's, we'll, we'll help you, and we want you to take the leadership, and, and we'll help you and see how we can bring what we need to our community. Uh, one, one idea that came forward was an adult or senior playground. And this idea really probably came from McLean's wonderful Clemmy John Tree Park for children with disabilities. And uh, we looked at that, and when we took our grandchildren there, we said, oh, that looks like fun. We'd like to try that. And not only would a playground be a, a, a fun place to play, it would be a social gathering place, and it could also be a place to encourage us to exercise. Uh, another project would, uh, again, was the demonstration of using public transportation. The third of the four areas that we're concentrating on now is sustainability. How do we sustain our movement? Uh, by partnering with our um, organizations that already are in existence in Reston that we're fortunate to have, and you do have in McLean, too, a community center. We have a Reston Association. We're building sustainability. We're also working out a relationship with, relationships with two very strong nonprofits in the area, Life Circle Alliances, that was started by the Long-Term Care Coordinating Council, and also the Foundation for Greater Good. We feel that some of these nonprofits can help provide the expertise that we don't have. And finally, we're working on uh, neighborhood development. When we looked at resources, we felt like our real resources were for our neighbors, as, as Steve said. Uh, leaders in each small neighborhood within Reston are asking their neighbors what they would like to have. I met with my neighborhood, which is just 35 homes, and I said, what would you like to have? Would you like to have a neighborhood watch program? Would you like to have, we already had something many neighborhoods didn't have, which was a list of the people in the neighborhood so you could communicate with each other. What, Two of our, my neighbors decided that they would start a website so that we could communicate with each other needs or recommendations. So we want to help everyone who chooses to, to remain in Reston for a lifetime. So in closing, while we're fortunate that there are other villages that we speak with, that we learn from, and that we work with, we've tried to start it with a blank canvas, as Steve said. We, have, we did follow in the footsteps of our supervisors like John Faust, who, who always encourage a grassroots development of, of action. And um, also, that way we create a model that's inclusive, that's credible, that's authentic. Um, every supervisory district, like every village, is different. And we don't know what Reston for a Lifetime will look like in three years or five years. But we know that we've empowered our people and we're on the right track for our community. Thanks so much, uh, Pat. And uh, you finishing up there talking about neighborhoods is a great segue to our next month.